episode of Trim Chicks Radio, where we trim the junk but keep the real. We are your hosts, Miss Melissa and Rose, and we will be live with you for the next segment. Join the conversation. Dial 657-383-0329 and press the number one. Get through hump day. Listen live every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have been having some technical difficulties this morning, and let me tell you, it has not been fun at all. Um, so we, I do apologize. We apologize for the delay in today's episode. It just, the studio was not connecting, and we've been at it since 9 o'clock this morning. So, yeah, but you know what? It's hump day, so, you know, it's all good. All good. It, it's, it's, it's all good because I just cannot right now. I can't. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's so on point when it you know because the the whole episode is on mental health and breakdown and mental wellness and things like that. And I'm just looking like seriously. And anybody who knows us, both of us, we're both the same. We're so anal. Last night we made sure everything flowed well, everything went well, everything was up and running to go in the studio. Then this morning, nine o'clock. Chaos, you know, just erupts, <laughs> and it's like, why is this right. not working? We shutting down, reloading, resetting. Re, it, this is it, this is just too much. This is too much. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you perfectly. Oh, okay. Just making sure, because Lord knows it was all the chaos on my end. But we're here. And like you said, it's a perfect fit for today because, good God, like, we just need to talk about it. So um, let's just jump into things. For those who are listening, I'm sorry I just came on myself, so Rose might have said this, but if you want to join in the call, 657-383-0329, just to listen in. If you want to jump in the conversation, just remember to press 1. So let's get to it, Rose. What, What are we talking about today? Mental health and wellness, and, you know, why is it important? Why why is it important for you to take care of yourself? Um, you know, I, I, was, I told Melissa this. This was, like, a while back. Um, the the um, CEO, is he the CEO? I can't remember, but I'm going to pull, pull it up right now so that um, I, I'm not you know, giving false information, but he killed himself, um, uh, the CEO of Gold, Golden Crust. And any if you're, like, from South Florida or whatever, you know Golden Crust. Like, Golden Crust is, <laughs> like, one of the best Jamaican-style restaurants. And, you know, they started real small, and, you know, they just jumped and started growing and expanding and had several stores across the East Coast. And um, when the the workers came in, they, they said that he was always happy, he was always smiling, you know, everything seemed normal, everything seemed good. And he came in and they came into the, the factory one day and they found him dead. And he left mm-hmm. a note. He left a note um, just saying, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't take it no more, you know, whatever the case may be. I, I, I want to pull this up really quick. It was on my phone, but because the, tif- the, the technical difficulties, you know, <laughs> I lost track of it. But, yeah, in December, he committed suicide. 
um, and he just basically was, you know, found dead in the Bronx uh, factory. Uh, let me pull this up so that I can give you guys the real deal. All right, so it's um, in the Bronx factory Saturday night, a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And, you know, everybody who knows Golden Crust again is, you know, Jamaican style. They, I think they first started off with the Jamaican beef patty, and it just grew in popularity. So they, you know, made the um, restaurant and then opened several restaurants uh, along the um, East Coast. And he was only 57 years old, and he committed suicide. And um, nobody can really know why. He committed suicide, but you know, again, th- there's not a, a, a formula on how people handle or cope with mental health. You know, I might deal with my mental health better than Melissa, or Melissa might deal with it better than I do. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that learn how to cope with stress and depression and you know, just different mental illnesses that you may or may not have. It just might be stress. It might be burnout. It might be, you know, you're just tired. Um, and, you know, sometimes in depending on the period and time of your life, things can be so exaggerated. It can, something so minute as the baby crying, depending on the <laughs> person's mental health, it can be so amplified where it's like, oh, my gosh, the scream is piercing, and it drives somebody crazy. So, you know. I, th- mm-hmm. I think along with what you're saying, I think especially entrepreneurs are seen as like, well, you have to have your shit together. Look at how you're running a business, and you took this leap, and you did this and that. You're this strong person, which we are. But even the strongest person, you can only handle so much. And when you're overwhelmed with projects and deadlines, and then we have to talk about the greatest stressor of all with anybody, but especially with entrepreneurs, is that financial stress. If you have staff, you're, you're paying people's livelihood. You, you have to worry about your own bills and getting money in, and then as soon as you get a dollar in, the expenses are going out, and that, like, weighs on you. So like you said, it's not a matter of who handles stress better or can you handle stress. It's just a matter of do you know how to handle it for yourself, and, and that's where it gets into the to the management of it. How do you know when you're coming up on that period, and then what do you do prior to, during, and after, you know, that kind of thing? And I'm, I'm really happy that uh, we have two guests. Um, this morning from Journey to Health, and they'll expound a little bit later on in the show more on different ways to cope with stress, the signs, um, how to look for the signs. And, you know, too, another thing I really hope we can dig into, too, is if some if you know the signs of someone dealing with stress or burnout or, you know, just you can see that their mental health is a bit shaken, how can, what can you do to help, and how can you not be so overbearing? Because Melissa and I talked about that yesterday, and, you know, she expressed how she likes a little bit more time, and I know for me, if I need <laughs> something's wrong, I'm like, okay, I, you need to call. You don't have to be on the phone with me, but you need to call. You need to check in. I need to make sure that you're good because I don't care if you just, pick up the phone and you breathe. As long as I could hear breath coming out of you, then okay. <laughs> and it's not like your last breath. Don't do that to me. But, you know, like you're breathing and you're fine. I need to hear that. And, you know, but some people just like, you know what, I just need to unplug and get away um, for a little bit. I just want to close myself off to the world and just isolate myself. Yeah, that could be good, but then that could be not so good, too, um, because just last week, uh, a mom, she killed two of her babies 
and herself. She jumped off the br- bridge. This was in Charlotte. She jumped off the bridge, but before she did that, before she killed herself, she killed her two babies who were three and six years old. I mean, beautiful, beautiful family. And, you know, her last thing was like she just can't take it no more. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know, maybe if, I don't know, a friend called or, I don't know. She probably didn't, may not have answered the phone, may not, may have. You, you just never know. Um, so it's, you know, listening to those cues and um, realizing right. those cues right. and, and acknowledging I'm them. A, and Like Rose said, mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a disappear. Like I, I will do a disappearing act in a heartbeat. I will vanish. And it's not like she I'm sure running does. or hiding from yeah, I'm not running or hiding from the stress or the problems or this and that. But one, I have to unplug, recharge, clear my head. And two, um, because of the business ventures that I have and, and dealing with the public, I'm surrounded by noise all the time. And whether the noise are emails coming in, people coming in, people calling, this and that, and it's hard to really – Think of the plan and what you have to do until until I can clear away from all the noise. So um, I recently, not recently, a couple of years ago, um, I did a really ultimate, like, disappearing act. Um, I didn't think it was out of the norm because, like, all my friends and loved ones know that I do this, and they know what's going on, so they're not surprised. They're like, oh, Melissa has a lot going on right now. So on group chats, they're like, just wave your hand when you're back, blah, 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 no big deal. But the timing wasn't right. There was a lot going on in D.C. There was a, there were storms. This, is, this was during crazy weather. There was also like an active shooter or something. Something crazy where me disappearing off the grid was not allowed by people. So um, yeah. my phone was ringing, and when I disappear, I, I disappear. I would turn my phone on, do not disturb, in a heartbeat, and only favorites can get through all this other stuff. And, um, like, my my parents actually sent the fire department and the police to my condo door. Like, they were like, go in there, check on her, what's going on. Everyone was just like, as a grown woman, how? What were you thinking? Were you mad? Did you want to go? And I'm like, no, nah, I get it. They they know that I do a disappearing act, but this was a chance. This was a time where so much was going on with me and out that it just they they need to come on through. So now we have these new rules, um, not just with my family but my loved ones. Um, where if I do a disappearing act, I will still like send up a red flare and let y'all know like I'm alive. I'm not in danger. I'm not this and that, blah, blah, blah. So I might do, like, a Facebook update. Hey, I'm still breathing, blah, blah, blah. Or I'll send out a mass text or jump in, jump out. And that's just as a courtesy for them. And, and it's also my way of thanking them for letting me do what I need to do for my own sake. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, you can't – everyone know – if you know me, you know travel is a big part of my – rejuvenation like I will like going on a trip whether it's a day trip a road trip a weekend getaway this and that um, out of the country in the country whatever is how I like come back like charged up let's go blah 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 but as an entrepreneur and as a sister on a budget we don't get to do those trips all the time so I will do a staycation in my home and not want to talk to nobody, it's as if I was in another country. Like, nah, I'm not able to pick up the phone and this and that. But the least I could do is reach out to people and let them know, like, hey, I'm well and good. I just need to do this for myself uh-huh. right now. I usually get it. Um, so, yeah, if you're, if you're a disappearing person, set up some codes and some flags and some this and that. And it's funny because okay. I thought this hey, was We're going to need to not do that in 2018 because too many people <laughs> – have been going the suicide route, and uh-uh, we can't, uh-uh. Like somebody do like me, I can't, I can't, I can't take it. I can't take the not knowing. Do what you got to do for yourself. <laughs> That's what it is. But it's funny because I thought this was something that I developed as I got older. My college roommates were still in touch, 
And they were like, nah, Heffa, you used to do that in school. I'm like, what are you talking about? They were like, you are uh-huh. just a private person. And I'm an extrovert. I'm like, give me a party any day. But I am private with my moves. Uh, and you'll hear me say that uh, uh, throughout the season where I'm like, hey, make moves, keep them to yourself, and just drop announcements. And they were like, if it, they were like, we had a 72 hour rule with you. If we didn't hear from you in three days, we're going in your room. Oh, we see signs that she is around. She is living. Because they were like, there were times you're our roommate and we don't even see you. And I'm like, oh. And she's like, they were like, yeah, 72 mm-hmm. hours. I'm like, oh, my bad, y'all. My, so. my saving grace is that our last year, you know, we had a lot of classes together. So she couldn't hide from me too, too long. So. <laughs> There you go. There you go. So either way. You know what? Um, Let's go pay some bills. I know that we had a late start, but, you know, we we getting there. We we getting there. We going to get it together. (laughs) But let's pay a couple bills, um, and we will be right back with more of the conversation on mental health and wellness. And if you're listening, um, press the number one. Tell us how you cope or give us tips or things that help you deal with the stresses of work, life balance, and, you know, if you can't go on a trip, what what, what to do, what what works for you. Um, so stay okay. tuned. The number is 657-383-0329, and we will be right back. For forever. This is forever. Wedding planning has been going smoothly for me lately thanks to the event experts at Bell Events International. They have truly helped me every single step of the way. Visit eventswithbell.com for your complimentary consultation. Eventswithbell.com. Your events should be stress-free. Let them help. Baby, don't worry, I got Are you stressed out and feeling blue? Well, treat yourself. Go to Sweeter Hughes. Located at 1540 North Capitol Street Northwest in Suite 201 in Washington, D.C. Look for the pink door. Sweeter you. Have you gotten your copy of No Junk Food Zone? This tale is so hilarious. It's about one family's journey to eating healthy. And let's face it. We've all been at that place where we've wanted to make good decisions on what we eat. But imagine doing it as a family. Head on over to www.nojumpfoodzone.com to order your copy and have access to free recipes that you can do together as a family and be happy. That's www.nojumpfoodzone.com. as 
someone who would be in corporate America. So, you know, just mm-hmm. going to a shrink and sitting on someone's couch, you know, that, that access is not readily available to us. But, you know, you know, the stress of work-life balance also hit people who are still working in corporate America, too. So we do not want you to feel excluded. We feel you. However, Mm -hmm. if you have that access through your insurance to go lay on somebody's couch and vent, you better do it. It will save you a whole lot, trust and believe. Um, And if you didn't uh, follow us season one, we will tell you again, Melissa and I, we both graduated from the University of Florida, and um, one of our concentrations um, was rehabilitative counseling. And so that's why we have a passion for the therapeutic side of things. Um, and Melissa did it. Melissa stuck in there longer than me. I know uh, one year after I graduate, I was like, man, I'm already crazy. I cannot work with these crazy folks. I'm out of here. I can't do this. I'm going to just stick to the health administrative out of my um, degree and call it a day because I can't do this. So, um, <laughs> Melissa, tell us a bit about your experience. On something that you just said, uh, I think one of our colleagues was you. Yeah. Um, so let me jump in with something you just said. You're right. As entrepreneurs, we might not have insurance coverage for counseling or for other therapeutic tools or a lot of corporations and small businesses now have outsourced their HR department to like companies like ADP or even QuickBooks. And so you have an HR firm and you can call them and you can talk to somebody and through that and blah, blah, blah. However, and then they've also started spinning off now. I think there's like, um, I know there's an app where you can call a therapist or whatnot, but aside from that, as entrepreneurs, we automatically have the get it done spirit. You you need something. Right. You need a new client to pay this bill, we get it done. You need to pull off an event, we get it done. You have to have that mentality when it comes to your to balancing your life as well. You don't have time to take a break, you figure out how to take that break. You get the extra help, you figure out how to cover it. Um, I have a lot going on. And like Rose said, our background, our passion has been in that. So I've seen firsthand and I've experienced the lowest points and the highest points. So I can kind of tell when I'm getting a little blah, blah, blah. blah. But when you look at my budget, my budget does not afford for me way my insurance is set up to pay $250 a session to sit with someone every week and talk with them. Um, So I knew what outlets I needed and the personal experiences. I actually made a barter with somebody. Y'all know how I feel about trades and collabs, but if they have something to offer and you have something to bring to the table, it makes sense. So I called up someone and I said, listen, I can do your marketing, your social media marketing, your this and that in exchange. This is what I need and blah, 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 and it worked out. So Again, have that entrepreneur spirit where, oh, my gosh, I don't know how, but I need this. Let me figure out how to get it. And and that's what it yeah. is. It goes back to that hustle, and you got to figure out how to get what you need. And if you need couch time, for me, it wasn't couch time. For me, it's that unplug alone. And like I said, I can't go on a trip. So for about an hour, shout out to B Sharp Music Studio about twice a week. I go into there and I can sit at a piano and I can put all my emotions in this little tiny room for a second. And then I can go back to work and not feel like I'm going to kill somebody. So that's what, that's what I do is the trade off. Find yours. If you can't even afford a boxing studio right now, you go to that boxing ring and you say, Hey, I got some stuff I need to get off my chest. You need this service from me. How can we work this out? So I can come in and it starts from there. So, um, so, yeah, there, there's multiple ways. But I think our guests are on the line. Yeah, yep. I'm excited to introduce uh, the two ladies from Journey to Health, Miss Marcia Cole and Miss uh, LaToya. Are you guys on live with us? Yes. yes. Hey, there. Hey. 
Hey, ladies. Okay. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for being part of our show. How are you? Great. I'm great. <laughs> okay, let's get our voices down. Marcia, could you could you say hello so we we can know that voice, Marcia? So it's so easy for you to recognize my voice because I'm the only one who probably sound like the little girl of the group. So hi guys, my name is Marcia Cole. <laughs> Okay. Hello, hello. Hey, Mark. Hey, everyone. I'm Latoya. Latoya McCann. Come on, get down. As I change okay. my baby diaper, I'm, I'm on here. Okay. <laughs> I'm it's here. perfect okay. that you have the, the baby with you because we're talking about how to balance all that out and the stressors. So, uh, mm-hmm. Toya, let's start with you. Tell us about the journey that you're on and how stress and balanced life is affecting it and what, you know. Okay, well, right now, the journey I'm on, I'm on the, my own, right now I'm taking my own personal journey. Like, I'm on a journey to change. I believe this is my year of change because, like, I just feel like throughout the years I became stagnant of just accepting and living life like that. So <laughs> here you go. Here's my mom. I made a commitment to myself that I'm going to do whatever is necessary or whatever it takes to change whatever it is I need changed in my life. Um, this is not what, you know, so right now I started a business called It Works. I'm currently part of that business. And I'm a stay-at-home mother at the moment. I am seeking employment just to get extra funds, but, you know, I'm just doing my business right now. <laughs> um, as far as is it really How do you cope with, with, with everything um, as far as, like, you launching your own business, you're a stay-at-home mom, you know, um, just trying to deal with the everyday stressors that come with that because, you know, I don't, you know, people look at stay-at-home moms like, oh, she's just a stay-at-home mom. They were like, I don't know who works heartbeat because that is a lot of work. Like, come on, baby, let's go to uh, daycare or grandma's house because we, we're not doing that. You know, Mm-mm. and as much as I love my children, even those snow days, I'm like, okay, why well, y'all home? Y'all go back to school. Like, cause I have more than one I'm like, we, they don't need these snow days. They can go to school. But, I mean, mm-hmm. I love, I yeah. enjoy my children. And I actually want to be a part of raising my children and being home. But I just know that I'm not at that level yet. So I, it, it, it is a balance. You have to just know how to balance it out. Here, Trinity. So, like. Um, what what are, like what are how, some things that you do to help balance that work-life um, stress that sometimes think, can hit you? Um, Like. I, I need breaks. I'm like kind of, I was listening to what Melissa said. I'm the type of person sometimes, which is not always good, I would say, I distance myself and I need a break. Like even from your own family sometimes, you feel like you need that vacation Girl, or something, yes. a, a wave time just to get your thoughts together and refocus and know what, what it is that you need to do. I'm that type of person as well. Sometimes I just feel like I just need to unplug a little bit. Because I got there's so much going on. Like when you're, especially like on social media and all types of things, there's so much going on that you just get your mind racing and you don't focus on the things that you need to get done. So um, right now, I, I mean, I have to stay plugged in because of my business, you know, with the, with the media world. But right now, I just I take care of her. Um, I take the time to myself sometimes. Sometimes I will find daycare here. Or I have someone in the family watcher so I can get things done. I, I, you know, do things in the house. I apply for jobs. I work my business. We set up vendor events. So I try to balance my work and family time. And I also, like, you know, I, I, we have family time, like, together when the kids come together. We all like to go out to the movies. We do things together, but I also make that time out to do my business. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. My friend. Um, what about um, you, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> We're both jumping on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Marcy, tell us uh tell us your story a little bit. Where are you at with things? Okay. So my name is Marcy Cole. I am a registered nurse by profession. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of three kids. So I have a thirteen year old, an eight year old, and a three year old. And I do work full time. I'm also an it works distributor. 
and I'm trying to adventure out on my own and leave uh, this nine to five and start my own yeah. nursing consultant. I'm in the process of doing that. So half the time, like I don't know how I'm, I'm making it. Like I feel like I'm just floating in sometimes. And mm-hmm. learning to find that balance, it gets really hard, especially when you're a full-time worker, a full-time mom, and a wife, and your kids are in activities, and also I'm really involved in my church. So I truly had to learn, one, to prioritize, to tell people no, that I can't help you, and to feel okay with saying no, and I truly had to learn to make a list, like a to-do list, you know? Um, knowing what to do and like finding that time to take care of myself, whether that is going for a, a drive by myself, going to the store by myself, just truly finding time for myself. Um, I try to maximize my time by like not wasting my time. Like I don't watch too much TV or do anything like that. Anything that I do, I try to make sure I'm getting some type of return on. So for me, I definitely I see a therapist, and I know like a lot of people. In our community, especially African Americans, they think like, "I'm not crazy. Why do I need to see a therapist?" Like, people truly mm-hmm. need to understand like, you don't have to be crazy to see a therapist. Mm-hmm. Everybody right. needs someone to talk to. Like, everybody needs someone to yeah. talk to. Yes, you have friends, you have family that you can talk to, but a therapist they just like bring a different perspective, and it's literally you just sitting there just getting your thoughts out. Someone to be yeah. able to help and they, and they can be see effective. it from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. They teach you how to cope with certain things. So for me, like, I suffer from anxiety sometimes. And so, like, learning how to cope with my anxiety and things like that, the therapist definitely helps with that, you know, because sometimes you can go to your family and your friends, but they can't help you all the time, like, because they have their own things that they're dealing with. So the therapist right. definitely brings a different uh, perspective for you. I think as an entrepreneur, as a person, period, whether you're an entrepreneur or 9 to 5, it's just certain things that you should take in consideration when it comes to your mental and emotional health. People truly don't understand, like as a nurse, people don't understand that your emotional health affects your physical health. So mm-hmm. most people who die of certain things like heart attacks and strokes, it's not about they're not eating right or they're not exercising. It's about their stress level and how they're handling and coping, coping, coping with things. So emotional health plays a key part, and it, you just follow certain key things to help you do that. So you have to definitely make time for yourself. Self-care is so important. You know, I don't care if it's just, like, you going to the store and shopping or you, like, watching a show or reading a book. Like, you have to definitely take time for yourself. Getting enough, enough sleep is truly important. I know as entrepreneurs sometimes, you know, that we stay up late when we wake up early, but we definitely have to get enough sleep. Because what happens when you don't get enough sleep, then your brain is not going to be able to function at 100%. And you're not going to be able to focus mentally. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, you know, you do definitely want to make sure that you're eating healthy so you can have energy. And exercise definitely helps as well because it helps us you know, change our mood. It helps give us more energy and it helps, it helps put us in a good mood. So, you know, I'm truly learning to say no to others and say yes to myself more, to prioritize and do things with, you know, what I feel that is important. And to know that, like, I can't do everything on one day and it's okay if I don't get it done today because there's always tomorrow, you know. There's always tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So not really putting too much pressure on yourself is very important as well. I agree a thousand percent with everything you said. And I love the saying no to others. I've been working on saying no, but then you forget that you have to start saying yes to yourself. As, as women, we are always the ones to pick up the pieces and let's go clean and let's go give ourselves and let's do this and that. And sometimes we, we neglect doing what we need to do to take care of ourselves. I I agree a thousand percent on everything that you just said. Um, And And I love the honest. Don't take care of yourself. You you can't. You won't have anything left to give to anyone mm-hmm. else. Not your children, not your husband, not your family members, not even your job, because you're gonna get to a point where it's like total burnout, and you mm-hmm. will not have nothing else to give. So instead of letting Man. yourself get to that point, 
um, you know, just know, recognize the, the warning signs and do something about it. Me and Rose talk about that often. We, we, we refer to the crash a lot. Because especially when we have things going in our separate projects and we're going, 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 kind of check in and be like, all right, Rose, so I noticed some postings and emails went out at like 3 this morning. What's going on? Girl, I had to get it done because, you know, blah, 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 tomorrow and this and that. Okay. And then when it's like a week of that, I'm like, any day now it's going to hit. And then, sure enough, you get that text where your body will say, all right. Two, one, (laughs) man down. Your body will say, all right, you're not going to give me a break. I'm just going to take this break. And when you know you have a lot going on, you can't have that crash just happen at any point. So it comes into that planning. And I love all the tips that Marcia just said about working out, eating right, sleeping right, because it's, or sleeping, getting your enough sleep, because it's easy as entrepreneurs just to get going and not Mm – plan for those steps. Let me put something in here. Let me take this. Let me do that. So, and it all fits in together. I agree. Uh, Toya, Marcy, can y'all tell us like, what do you do when you're in this overwhelming stress and what's your method? If it's, if it's not a, let me take a breather. Like when, when do you know it's time to remove a person or either yourself from a situation or this and that? Because that stress is starting to just deteriorate. Or when do you keep chugging through? Because as entrepreneurs, we will keep beating our head up against a wall or stay in a situation because we've got to beat it and conquer it. But when is your clue of like, nah, y'all ain't about to kill me. I'm walking away. Or do you have one yet? Okay. So this is, this is oh, hello. Go ahead, Marcia. Okay. Go ahead. So this is Marcia speaking, and the key thing is like being able to recognize like your triggers. So stress is is normal, but like a small amount of stress is good because like it pushes us through de- deadlines and things of that nature. But high levels of stress are not good. So being able to recognize your triggers is very important because everybody has different triggers. So for mm-hmm. me, like, if, if it's a personal situation and, like, I recognize, like, if I'm feeling type, some type of ill will or negative thoughts towards something or someone or, like, I'm just, like, my anxiety levels are, like, just truly high, then first I take a step back and I look inward I look at myself and see what can I do differently you know because at the end of the at the end of the day you can't change people you only can change yourself so I look at myself and see like okay am I doing everything right should I do something differently and then when I come to the realization that okay so it's not me I'm doing everything right then I look at the person I'm like okay I just need to if I can't figure out a way to solve this situation then I just need to remove myself from this person in this situation you know, because anything mm-hmm. that causes you stress or anxiety, like, you just need to remove yourself because you have control of yourself. You have control of, of, over your inner peace. No one else has control over that but you. So, you know, sometimes it's really hard, but you just got to know that, okay, it's not me. It's this person or the situation. So let me remove myself, and that's how you solve the problem before it gets truly intense where you don't have any control over any anymore. Because any time I get to the point where I feel like, I'm about to go off from somewhere, like, I immediately have to go pray. Like, I have to go pray and ask God, like, please, like, remove these thoughts from my head. And prayer is, like, a really big thing for me because, like, everything I have comes from him. And, you know, so, like, anytime I'm I'm feeling doubtful or stressful, like, I go to him and I just lean on him and I just give it all to him and I just let him guide my steps. So that's. I mean, my key is, like, looking inward and praying about it and then just, you know, realizing what the problem is and how to solve it. And um, I was going to say the same thing. I'm a firm believer in prayer. Like, if you feel like you're in a situation in a bind and you don't know exactly what the next step to take, I mean, whatever your faith is out there, whatever you believe in, just prayer or meditate. Sometimes you just need to take time out to meditate and think about where your next steps are going to be. Um, like she said, because you can't control anyone else. You can't. The only, only person you can control is yourself. So you just have to stop and think what it is that you're doing and just move forward. And then at the end of the day, like they're not going to stop you. They're not making your life. So you have to move forward with what you're doing in your life. You can't 
continue to hold people's hands or continue to like bring them. I mean, if they don't want to come with you, then that's them. You you go forward mm-hmm. with what you have to do. Look out for people at the same time, but you can't stop that. Just let them stop you from doing what you need to do. Um, right. And that's what I do. I usually just prayer, and it's I'm a strong believer, so. This year, I've noticed, like, I mean, your circle might get smaller, but guess what? <laughs> they're, not, they're not changing your bank account. It doesn't matter. My my circle changes yeah. all the time. I keep the close ones with me that I know are there for me, and the people that I'm with or with me. Well, I just And you gotta, have to be okay uh, with that, too. You just got to be okay mm-hmm. with that, too. If you may lose some yes. people along the way, and you that's feel totally okay. okay. It's totally okay. So I just got a text. Um, from Siobhan out of D.C. Hey, girl. Um, so the question <laughs> is for the mom. We'll answer them in the order of Toya, Marcia, LaToya, Marcia, and Rose. They want to know, do you separate the stress that you're dealing with work from your family, or do you bring it to them? And I, I do know this person. Thanks for calling and listening. She's a new business owner just getting it started, and we had a discussion about how much do you unload on the family, but you don't want to add the stress, worry, or concern. So you're talking about which your business you unload the stress? Do you keep it separate? Like, Right. When you're working at a nine-to-five, when you leave the office, you close the door, you're like, I'm leaving that there. But when you're an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. of course you're bringing it home, but you don't want to bring that stress in. They're asking, how do you separate it? Nope. Or if you should separate it. I don't know which one. <laughs> you, okay. you definitely separate it. You, def- you have to separate it because what's going to happen is you, you, you'll lash out on your family or yeah. the, the littlest thing that they do on any ordinary day all of a sudden gets on yeah. your nerves. And that's something that you don't you don't want to be like I guess like so bitter when you get home because then nobody want will want to be around you, you know. And mm-hmm. so it's not fair to to subject your family, your children, especially children. They have nothing to do with it. Um, they didn't even ask to be here, to be honest. Yeah, you know, they so didn't sign up for this. they're 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 um they're innocent in everything. Um, so definitely, and, and trust me, it's easier said than done to separate because right. when, especially when it's crunch time, and you have the deadline, and you got because see, you don't have that direct deposit being deposited every mm-hmm. two weeks. So this is your livelihood. So you yep. you know how it is stressful when it's time for crunch time. You gotta deliver, and you know just external factors affecting delivery. That could be very stressful. But at the end of the day, you have to learn how to disconnect and uh, through um put your attention to your family. And sometimes what mm-hmm. I do is I just. You know, do not disturb. Leave me on voicemail. You know what? It it is what it is. I've, if I know that I've done my absolute best, I need to leave my phone. Sometimes I'll leave my phone in my room, go and deal with the children, do dinner, do and be present for them. Because I can die. You're going to find somebody mm-hmm. else to do your thing. Yeah. My children will have me forever. So right. that separating is you have to do it. It's easier said than done, but once you start learning the triggers, you're getting upset over everything. You're yelling at the children. You're not laughing or, you know, enjoying them much. Those are the little signs that you have to notice and and catch them before they snowball into this big, you know, typhoon, and it's like, you know, no one wants to be around you. on the other hand, going to what Marcy said about, um, about talking to a therapist, laying it all out because you have to put it out there. If you go home and you're putting this out to your family, like, hey, let me tell you what, Marcia, if you, you're yeah. talking to your husband, let me tell you all this mess that goes on. So you know when I'm popping off, it ain't to you. Like, yeah. You know, I also believe – oh, I'm sorry. I've, go ahead, Toya. This is Toya. I'm sorry. By the way, this mm-hmm. is Toya. 
I believe that you should separate your business with, with your, I mean, your family. But I also believe that you should create time to have your family, like to give your all, all your focus to your family. Because, um, like, sometimes your business can overtake your family. Like, it can start to disconnect throughout the whole family. You can see mm-hmm. with a disconnect, like, the communication is not the same. Like, And I'm going through this personally, so this is how I know. Like, um, like you said, you snap at every little thing. Your kids do something that's not that serious. You snap at them. You and your spouse mm-hmm. aren't really connecting. Like, you can see the disconnect. So this year I personally divided, my, divided myself to – Sometimes just leave my phone, like, somewhere else. Don't even use it. We'll have family time. And I also feel like you should be able to express some of your feelings to your spouse or whoever it is that you are with. Like, if you're having a bad day, y'all should be able to talk about it. Even if it has to do with your business, you should be able to go to him and talk to him, be like, babe, you know, today I wasn't having such a good day with the business because of this, this, and this. And if he's supporting you and what you're doing, then, you know, it should be okay. You should have that Mm -hmm. time to talk to him. But you should also yeah. I'm, put when it's when it's a spouse, yeah, of course. But I'm talking about like the children. You know, the children. Well, no, not depending on how those children. Just significant other. They can handle a little yell here and there. They they can handle it. They'll be aight. <laughs> I'm talking about yeah, so, so, the significant other. Take like, the like, like, blood of it. Okay. <laughs> No, yes, that's the look. When you get with an entrepreneur, just understand you that's the territory that comes with it. I'm not saying it's okay, but you know, it may no, but it, it come. It's happened. Believe me, it's it's happened. I'm like, <laughs> hey, they like, what is wrong with you? I right, okay, let me calm down. <laughs> but and yeah. being a therapist so, works too, whether it be just a personal yeah. therapist or for your relationship or whatever it is, that it does help. And I just started doing that too. Because mm-hmm. I never like to tell anyone my problems. I kept it to myself. And that's another thing that's not really good to do sometimes because you just have oh, everything no. built up to you. And then, it, yeah. you know, if you just keep everything built up and it, you explode, like, and you'll go off on the wrong person sometimes if you didn't mean to. So it's good to release some of that energy sometimes that you get built up and talk to someone. Now, I know that we What about you, Marcia? Like, about – oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh. go ahead, Marcia. Oh, no, you're fine. So um, I have to piggyback on some of the things you said. So, like, it's truly important to – communication is is truly important in all aspects of your life. So, like, if you are having a bad day, because you know what your triggers are. You know when you're having a bad day. So when you go home, it's important to tell your spouse. And I even talk to my kids. I'll tell them, like, this is what's going on with mommy. Because it also teaches your kids how to handle stressful situations. So if you're coming home and, like, screaming and things like that, then you're not really teaching them how to handle stress. You're teaching them all the bad coping skills on how to handle stress. So I always tell my kids, like, mommy has this meeting, mommy has this. This is what mommy has going on. And I tell them, like, you know, I'm just so upfront with them. You know, especially when they're a certain age, you can have these, like, conversations with them. But when, you, when you're when you able to recognize your triggers, you're able to recognize, okay, I need to take some time for myself. So if you know that you're stressed and you're about to go home, well, let me stop and grab me something to eat real quick. Or let me do this real quick before I go home. Or let me call one of my girlfriends up and just unload on her real quick. For me, sometimes I just put on YouTube and I put on something like motivating or something spiritual and I just listen to it and it just it just changes my mood. Or maybe I put on some music and I'm in my car and I'm just like jamming and, you know, dancing. And it helps change my mood. Before I enter my home, I'm already like putting myself in a good mood. So you got to be able to realize like I'm not in a good mood right now. So how can I change this around? Because it's not right for your family to suffer because at the end of the day, your family's always going to be there whether you succeed or fail. Those people that are making you upset, that situation in your business that's making you upset, it's not going to always be there. Like, I've learned to realize that these are temporary things. So I should not get worked up about it. It's just temporary. If I keep pushing, if I keep doing what I'm supposed to do, this too will pass. You know, Mm -hmm. if you start looking at things like this is temporary and this too will pass, then you won't stress over it. Just knowing that, okay, what do I have to do to change this situation? And you know, um, one an additional right. thing that I've um, started uh, doing too is okay. If something that is stressing me out, it is happening for a reason. 
what can I learn from this? What is the mm-hmm. lesson that I need to learn from this? Because you know what? Until you get it, it's going to keep happening. So right. my so thing now part. is, okay, listen, I, come on, Rose, let's get this lesson so we can keep going to the next phase because I don't have time to keep, you know, going through this cyclical cycle of repeating the same thing over and over and these encounters over and over. Obviously, there's a lesson that you need to learn from it. So to your mindset, too, changes the way you, how you approach stress, how you deal with it, how you let it affect you, um, how you let it spill into your life. And th- that doesn't come easy. Like, that's something that you have to teach yourself. It takes therapy. It takes, you know, just relearning the process of how you process things, how you let it affect you. Agreed. And another thing that we need to remember, because when we talk about stress and stressors, of course, and triggers, what's coming up is the bad. And and then that should. That's that's 95% of what stress is. But stress is any pressure, good or bad, that we're putting on ourselves. So I yeah. know that I like working in, like, high-pressure situations. Let's go, let's hit it, da 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 But you can't operate 365, 24-7 in high-pressure. That will wear on you as well. And I have to remind myself, like, okay, no, you can't, you can't sit back. I mean, you can't say that, like, okay, I'm always going to get it done. I like this. This is what I live for. This is a lot of energy because that wears on you on itself. So when you're looking at – you could sit back and be like, things are going great right now. I got this meeting. I got this client. I got to go out to this conference. I got to do this. I got to do that. And you listen to all this stuff that you have going on. It's great. But all that stuff is considered stress. It's still considered pressure. There's timelines. There's dates. There's this and that. So even even be conscious that when things are good, being that that's still something, even if it's good stuff, building on you. And I'm not saying like – start turning down clients or start turning down opportunities. But even when things are go, 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 go in a good way, we still have to take that time to even reflect on the good. You know what I'm saying? I got six days straight of all this great stuff happening. Let me take the seventh day to pause, to reflect, to thank, and then plan for the next move or whatnot because we got to remember to take those pauses. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, ladies from Journey to Health, uh, Latoya and Marcia, thank you so much for joining us. The dialogue was amazing, um, and we will be back. We just going hold to on for a, a second. Short... How do oh. how do they find you? What's your guys' Instagram website? Is there any way they can follow you and find out more information, or do you want to get that to us later and we can repost it? This is Marcia, so you can find me on Facebook or Instagram, and it's mm-hmm. Marcia Cole RN on both Facebook and Instagram. So Marcia Cole RN. Okay, Latoya. Hello. Okay, this is Latoya. Yeah. You can find me on Facebook by my name, Latoya Elaine. No, McCant. Latoya Smith McCants. I'm sorry, I changed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and on um, Instagram, my um, business page is get results underscore with underscore toy. I like that. <laughs> All, right. All right, sounds good, guys. And we'll be posting that information up later on our social media. And I think we're going to commercial. Yep, a All short right. break, and okay. we, we we will be back with the last segment of the show. Rant and rave. Miss Melissa will lead us into that. Um, again, if you're um, if you want to join the conversation, the number is six five seven three eight three zero three two nine. You can also listen through blogtalkradio dot com slash trim chicks um, or Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We are all there. All right, ladies, thank you once again for your time and the information that you shared with us, and we will be back. Bye. Bang, bang, looky, look. 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 Bang,
Like, why, why as entrepreneurs, why as black women, why as people building their brand do we have to show receipts? But she did show receipts. So big up to that. I'm pissed for her. However, comma, if you send the, the, the hard-to-deal-with angry person and people don't want to pay to be a, for you to be a pain in their behind, then who are you to say nobody should be with us because we don't want to deal with you? Is it a race thing? Is it a woman entrepreneur thing? Is it this and that equality? Or is it we don't want to deal with you, and if we have to deal with you, this is where we're going to start you at, see if you're going to act right. Because some of the biggest people have been like, I'm done with her. And then I also kind of wish her squad would kind of help her out. Her team needs to say, dude, you already look bad in this community. You already look bad in Hollywood. You're making it look worse. So I don't know whether to get behind her and be like, yeah, girl, you demand your coin, or either to be like, I need you to sit down. Because first of all, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know where I'm at with that. And for her to say boycott – well, everyone who knows me knows I have feelings about this whole, like, quick to boycott everything. So that's a whole different rant that we're probably going to go into. So, R- Rose, Yeah, let's not. Boy- let's not because Melissa and I go back and forth with that. Let, we Don't even mention that part because, you know what, we, I don't even feel like dealing with you right now when it comes to that. But um, I am so with you, you on this one surprisingly, surprisingly, because, you uh, know, I I want to stand behind her and and you know like damn you know am I not worth as much as my counterparts but when you look at the backstory and all the details around it it's kind of like well if I don't have to then I really don't want to deal with you kind of thing you I don't know I, I just I don't know. Are, is she wrong for demanding her worth? Like, first of all, and, it, and no, you sh- you is, should never apologize for demanding your worth. No, she is not wrong. She's absolutely apologize. right in her right to say, look, this is this is what I feel that like I'm worth. You know, um, right. she's very so the, right in demanding her worth. Um, so my rant, my rant. Hold on, the rant to, is towards people who are trying to value her receipts. The woman is just like, she just put out another video yesterday with her and her husband, yeah. Lord Jesus, yeah. and they're standing and yeah. like all her awards and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. part of me is mad at the public because they like, what you done did? We haven't seen nothing from you since this, this, and this. And then part of me is just like, Monique, if you're the legend you are, Tell them to Google you. You ain't gotta. You ain't gotta do this pony show for people. And and I'm I'm right. mad for her because I can I feel like she's just getting mad. Like I know y'all ain't questioning what I've done and where I've come from. But and you know what? This goes back to we talked about this season one where one of the celebrities, you know, she felt like she was pressured by the public to talk about why she's divorcing her husband. And it's oh, like, yeah. you ain't got to tell them nothing. Like, why are you explaining yourself? I, I agree with that. And, look, I'm guilty because I shared um, Kev on stage's video on that. You know, like, it, it was funny. I didn't I didn't share the video because I agree with what he was saying. <laughs> but it was so hilarious. I'm like, man, I got to share this because, for real, if you don't know um, Monique like that, and especially millennials, they they don't know nothing about, you know, the old school, you know, they just know present day, so they're going based on that, so if you don't know, like, what? back in the day, the queens of comedy, and, you know, the, what's that, that show she used to be on? Like, Rose, that's, that's the point, you just said, y'all don't know back in the day, but when it comes to your worth and entertainment, it's your value now, like, we can't pay you a million dollars because we ain't even going to make that on sales from you. So it, the fact that she was on the Parkers when we were growing up, <laughs> the fact that she did presses, you know, X amount of years ago, I feel like her showing her receipts made it look worse. Because worse. you were 
you were trying to make a Yeah, and then point. I think cause she did um, Precious. Somebody's mentioned she did Precious for only, like, 50K. And I'm like, dang, this is not a good look. It's 50K? Not a good look. It wasn't, hey, it wasn't 50K, but they didn't expect her to come in, kill, and crush it. But here's the thing. This is why, as entrepreneurs, we take that one, this is going to be really good opportunity for you. And so we go ahead yeah. and we take that low deal, and then everybody knows us as we the cheap go-to. And it, it can't yeah. be that way. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those, like, um, she, she, if she did do precious for a low amount, she needed to get her first, her first under her belt, but here's here's the problem. She did Precious. She killed it. She won her Oscar, but then she was horrible to work with doing Precious. She was horrible to work with after, at once she got that award, she definitely was horrible to work with, and then it's like, okay, what do we do now? And now the, the part that has me not wanting to be her ally is Monique is known for, like, I'm better than this person. She's known for comparing herself. You remember, she, she's mad at Empire because she was supposed to be Cookie Lion. And it's just like, you're never going to win if your only reason for winning is you feel like you're entitled because you're comparing yourself and you're like, I'm better than her. And I think right. that people who are the best, they don't compare. They don't say I'm the best because I'm better than this. They say they don't I'm even the have to. I'm they don't even have to yeah. make themselves known. Like yeah, they let their like, work speak for themselves. Right. Right. Exactly. But at the same time, maybe there are no female, especially black female comedians that are killing the game right now because we aren't given the opportunity, or either the opportunity they've given us is like chump change. So that's why we're not taking it. So it's that like. Oh, I want to cape for her. I want to be mad for her, but making it kind of hard. <laughs> She's making it. And, yeah. that, I mean, like, so final verdict. Are you team Monique or are you team Netflix? Hey, so, hey, 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 hey. I'm not <laughs> answering that. I ain't yes, answering you that. No. Yeah, we keep it real. <laughs> You gonna you gonna you gonna make them take my Black Panther card away? Nah, I'm good. Uh-uh. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I am Team Monique, but from the audience, dude. I like I got too many people sharing my Netflix passcode. I can't be giving that up. I can't boycott it. So, <laughs> I'll have so many people mad at me. So I, I'm just gonna be like Melissa. Keep what happened, <laughs> dude? You know it's twelve ninety nine. Come on now, get and your own Netflix. <laughs> and she, anything that Monique puts out in the next two years, I'm gonna make sure I go see it. Like I'm gonna give her my coins, but I can't give her my my Netflix password. So that's where that's at. Do you um? Yeah. Do you have a rant or a rave? I actually have a rave. I I am loving how Conan is enjoying himself in Haiti. Mm. You know, that was one of the countries, you know, Mr. 45 had something to say. And Conan right. is he is living his best life. Like his media, <laughs> social media post is giving me life. And I'm like, I can't wait till July because um, I'm planning, well, I hope to go there um, just to turn up and for my birthday. <laughs> so I'm just like, yes, this is what yes. I am talking about. About, yes. So, you know, I'm glad that he was able to share with people who may not have known or have known and just, you know, don't care about it, just the beauty of Haiti and the beautiful water and the beaches and the culture and the people, the food, you know. So I I just, I'm loving it. But because I'm trifling and we have time, I want to ask you, because I've seen this on social media, do you do you feel like now all of a sudden it's getting all these props and spotlights because certain celebrities or people who are not of color are suddenly being like, oh, no, it's great, or oh, no, it's over the 45, and it's like, where were you at 
say how great it was when we needed help from the earthquake, so we needed help from this and that. Do you feel some sort of way? Well, no, because years back, I, I felt like that years back when, you know, um, certain celebrities would go and then now all of a sudden everybody's Haitian now. Oh, everybody's repping now. Everybody's on the bandwagon. Um, especially like, you know, um, I think Angela Simmons. It was like a whole bunch of celebrities that went over there and showed like, you know, the beauty of Haiti and, and this was after the earthquake. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, back then I felt like that, but now it's just more like, look, I'm glad that you guys, it, it, because I'm so used to them demonizing Haiti as if it's mm-hmm. just like all it's known for is poverty and voodoo. Like that's that's not that's not the whole of it, you know. I could it's the same thing as the United States. I could look at it as, man, y'all known for greed, hatred, racism, Satanism, because there there's so many yeah. Satanists out there in the United yeah. States. What's the difference, you know? Um, so mm-hmm. it's just that, but that's not what makes up the United States. The the United States is, you know, ha- definitely has. So some of the most beautiful sights to see um, and beautiful people. So, again, I, I'm just grateful that – I'm grateful for the exposure, that it's not all what have been depicted, just the poor and the poverty levels and, you know, voodoo and all this and that. This is why Haiti can't advance – because they made a deal with the devil and the voodoo, blah, blah. Ugh, girl, <laughs> I'm just over that. So I'm glad that, you know, bandwagoners or not, it's cool. Right. It's cool. It, it's <laughs> crazy because um, America's supposed to be this country that supports in – links up when supposed to, and if we have an opportunity that we can share with others and blah, blah, blah. I, it, how do I say, let me get your feedback on this story. And this is why I kind of sit back when everybody's like talking about like support Haiti and I can't say I'm 45. I'm like, hmm, what were you saying when this is happening? So everyone knows, again, I like to travel. Um, so I travel different means, different ways. One thing I always do is I usually do a cruise every year. One of um, one of the cruise lines that I take, they have a private beach in Haiti, in Labadee. So huh. the problem with this is you're going to have an amazing beach day. They do this amazing food from the locals right on the beach for you, blah, blah, blah. It's great. But it is a private beach. So going uh-huh. to Haiti and experiencing the culture, you're not really going to get. You're going to get a really amazing beach day. The thing yeah. of it is, this is my torn feeling on on cruises because cruises, there's some ports where because the cruise line comes in, that is their number one tourism is their number one economic system, and they, they love it, and it's great. But And then you have a lot of locals trying to get in with the tourism and blah, blah, blah. So that's one thing. But my issue with this one in Labadee, and I've done the um, the private beach here, twice, but I won't do it anymore, because the last time we did it, like when we go there, the private beach has this huge scent, and before you get off the ship, they actually sent us a notice around to the cabins that were like, hey, um, poverty level has really decreased or increased, however they say it, in Haiti right now, so if you could stay away from the census, because you're going to have a lot of locals begging for the food, don't feed them. I was like pissed because this is the same notice that we get for like going to some countries and they're like, don't feed the lizards because you're going to have lizards coming after you. Like, don't do it. And this is what you're saying for. And then the thing about cruise ships is that they waste a lot of food. So even if you have this full ship, you have tons of food on this beach that can't go back to the, the ship. And they're saying, don't, don't invite the locals, don't have this and that. So when we get there, we always get a local tour guide, this and that. And so we told them, do you want to come back to the beach and have And they're like, no, they told us that we can't eat with you guys. So we're all like, what is going on? See, that's where I kind of have 
the catch-22. We want to stay and support from a distance, but are we really? Or are we really like, oh, man, that does suck, but are you that person who is like, I'll never go there, or if I go there, I'm only going on this cruise line because they do have an amazing – I don't know. So I'm kind of like when I see everybody saying support Haiti, changing their Facebook profiles, um, loving the celebrities that are going over there, I'm still kind of sitting back and I'm like, so what you going to do now? Am I am I yeah. wrong for thinking that way, or is it? Oh, I don't, I don't know. know. It, oh, oh is. Are you there? Did I lose yeah. you? You, I can you, hear you. I, I was out for a second. You hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I hope I'm um, not getting a bunch of texts being like, what the heck are you talking about, Melissa? But it was one of those things where I'm like, <laughs> really, guys? Like, it, it it just, I don't know. So now when I see the rap, but that could be a D.C. thing. Every time I see people rallying behind a cause, I get annoyed. Same with my views on boycotts, because I'm just sitting back and I'm like, are you really are you really it, that wrong? The, the only thing really about it is is that some of them are just so short lived. You know, it's like by next week, okay, back to our regularly scheduled programming. That's that's the only yeah. thing that annoys me with it. You that's, know, so but hey, I for me, I look at it as what's the positive takeaway from it? At least someone there's someone out there that didn't know about this cause and now they're exposed to it and. You know, that's true. They know about it, so that's how I look at it. Whether it's short lived or not, you know, you know how these things go. You know, people jump on the mm-hmm. bandwagon, and then after it dies down, and nobody remembers it. So, you know, it is what it is. Well, I am it is what it is. to see the birthday turn up pictures video from when you go to Haiti because you're gonna be a fool. What are you talking I'm, about? I'm, you you. You're going. What do you What do you mean? Oh, and we're not taking. We're not going to Labadi. We're going to the real Haiti. Okay. <laughs> the last time I was scheduled to go there, what happened? What What happened? There was a something happened, and we got rerouted. I can't remember. So anyway, looking forward to that. Oh. Another great show. So excited. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for dealing with the stressors we had at the beginning of the show of getting everything oh, set up. Talk so about the perfect show. setup for the show. Uh, remember to follow yeah. us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We have a lot of great things in store for this, uh, this season and a lot of things coming out. So make sure to follow us, and we will be back next week. Join us next week. Um, and for another great episode, remember, every Wednesday, <laughs> Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m., 11.30 a.m., join us, join the conversation, talk to us, tweet us, Instagram, all of that, Facebook, send us direct messages, private messages, um, just post under our pics, whatever. We love the love that you give, and thank you so mm-hmm. much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. See you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye. For forever. This is forever. Wedding planning has been going smoothly for me lately, thanks to the event experts at Bell Events International. They have truly helped me every single step of the way. Visit eventswithbell.com for your complimentary consultation. Eventswithbell.com. Your events should be stress-free. Let them help. Baby, don't worry, I got Are you stressed out and feeling blue? Well, treat yourself. Go to Sweeter Hue. Located at 1540 North Capitol Street Northwest in Suite 201 in Washington, D.C. Look for the pink door. Sweeter Hue. All right. Rubber band.